wanna sleep in Cause I got something to prove I gotta take what I Do you have questions about starting a trucking business? Box truck or CDL, I've done both. I can help you start your trucking business or grow your business so that you can buy more trucks. Use the link in the description to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. Now let's get to the video. Hey, this is Zach Pascarello. Good, how are you? Now still a good time to talk? Did you file on the website? Yeah, so after you after you file your LLC paperwork on the website, you should get some sort of email confirmation that your articles of organization have been approved and are ready for download. And that typically happens like two to three weeks after you submit the paper. Yeah, that's it. Okay, are you gonna drive the truck? So you already have your LLC and that but that's kinda it. Like you're looking at trucks, but you just have your LLC, like just kind of step one. Okay, so now that you have your LLC and your EIN, there's like a couple other administrative things that you can do pretty easily and most of them are free. Like I always recommend open up a business checking account with a local bank and start applying to credit cards, fuel cards, and get an easy pass for tolls. What do you think the advantage would be of waiting? Yeah, I could see that. So I, I think that's a good point. Um, business checking account and easy pass that can be opened up right away but what you just said about the credit cards that's a good point you will get or you you could get 12 months of interest free so yeah maybe maybe wait until you're ready for the credit cards maybe do it a week in advance because keep in mind you know it'll take a couple days for the credit card to come in the mail and for your application to process but yeah that is a good point maybe just wait on the credit cards if you're gonna wait you know a month or two before you actually get started yeah maybe wait to get the credit cards but fuel cards you, you can sign up for fuel cards because they're not going to give you 12 months of interest free so you can start signing up for fuel cards right away yeah so here's the way i have mine set up so i basically have like three ways of paying for things the fuel card and I only use the fuel card at gas stations. And I, I get a, a decent discount at the gas station. So I recommend getting a fuel card for, for gas stations. There are some fuel cards that offer, like you can also use them for maintenance at like loves or truck stops. I don't do that. I just use the fuel card for fuel. I don't use the fuel card for maintenance or anything else. Um, and, and the reason I do that is because of the discounts. Like you can get 15, 20, 25, 30 cents off per gallon if you get the right fuel card and go to the right gas station. They're all different. You know, I recommend do a little shopping around online, do a little research and you'll be able to find a good one. And then the, the credit card, um, a business credit card. And I, I use the credit card for everything else that I possibly can apart from fuel. So if I go to the truck stop and you know buy supplies or if I go to the mechanic or if I am paying my monthly insurance bill, I always use the credit card. Typically because I want to rack up credit card rewards. So I'll get like 2% cash back or travel rewards. And that's just pretty cool. Like it's not a lot, but you know, we spend a lot of money in the trucking business. So if you're spending 10,000 bucks a month and you get 2% cash back, you're going to get an extra 200 bucks every month just for using the credit card. Like you might as well. And then the third way of paying for things is my checking account. And I only do that if it's not possible to pay with my credit card. So like if I go to the DMV, you know, a lot of times they don't take credit cards or if I have to write someone a check, you know, I'll use the checking account, but I try to not use the checking account for anything if I can pay with a credit card or my fuel card. So the checking account is kind of like a last resort. Yeah, a lot of local banks have really bad credit cards with barely any rewards or benefits. So I, I would always stay away from like the credit card offered by your local bank. And I would try to get a credit card from one of the major credit card companies. I always talk about American Express, Capital One, and Chase. Those are the three credit cards I have, and they've been really good um, with great benefits, great rewards, and great credit limits, and great introductory APR. Yeah, so with the credit cards, I go for the, the big national companies for the credit cards, but for the checking account, I do the opposite. So for the checking account, I go for the local bank or the local credit union. Applying for your MC number and your DOT number is really, really simple. It, it can be kind of confusing at first, but there's actually a really good YouTube video that one of my friends uploaded like over a year ago and that's the same video that I used when I applied and he just walked me through step by step. And it's gonna take like 45 minutes, but you don't have to pay anybody else to do it. So you're gonna pay the FMCSA directly $300 to apply, but I see other companies offering to do it for you for like $500, $800 or even $1,000. That's not necessary. You don't need to pay anybody else to do it. It's not terribly complex. like. The questions are pretty straightforward. And after this video, I can actually send you the link of this YouTube video that I watched that helped me do it on my own. And it was super simple, only took 45 minutes. And then as soon as you're done with that application, you can immediately go and file for your BOC3 and your UCR. 
And those things you can also do on your own. Or you're gonna pay directly. One is like $60 and the one is like $25. So I've seen other companies offer to do your DOT and MC application, your UCR, your BOC3 filing for you, like all together as like some great package, but you can literally do it all on your own in less than an hour. And it's super simple. You don't need to pay anybody else to do it for you. Yeah, it's the same application. The only thing is though, you want to be careful about the timing of everything. So for me, whenever I did it last year, I did it a little bit too early and then I was kind of scrambling to find a truck because you basically have 60 days from the date that you submit your application to get insurance. And if you don't if you don't get insurance with your company in the first 60 days, it never happened to me, but I'm pretty sure like your application like gets dismissed and you have to do it all over again. So you want to make sure you basically you want to like pick out a truck first and then once you are pretty confident that you have a truck you want to get, then go ahead and file for your DOT and your MC number. There's no point in doing it way in advance because you're just gonna be stressing out about finding a truck. Because it might take you longer than you think to actually get your truck. Like just because you find a truck today that you want, you call up the dealership, say, hey, I want this truck, you still might not have it for two to four weeks after that. So just with, with all that being said, like the timing is very important with all this, but, but don't rush anything. Like you're doing your research now and that's great. Like make a checklist, figure out what needs to be done and what can wait. Just don't rush anything because as soon as you start rushing, then you start making bad choices and bad decisions. Just take your time, do your research and try to do things in the right order. That'll really save you in the long run. You, you don't, you don't want to do that. I thought about doing that too. There's really, I've heard guys like wanting, you know, the first 30 days, you can't book any loads. I want to age my authority. I'll just pay for insurance. It's not a good idea because you're going to be able to book plenty of loads in your first 30 days. I did it. I was able to book loads. Even with an 18 foot box truck, I was able to book loads in the first 30 days. So if you get a 26 foot box truck, you'll definitely be able to book loads. They're not going to be great. They're not going to be great loads, but you'll be able to book loads and insurance is incredibly expensive. So you don't want to pay for two or three months of insurance without running because you're going to be spending at least a thousand dollars a month just on insurance. And I, I've seen people spend even up to $2,000 depending on your credit score and your vehicle history and the type of vehicle you buy. So you'll be spending anywhere anywhere from one to two thousand dollars per month just on insurance, and you don't want to do that if you're not if you're not running your truck. Um, the market's pretty bad. Yeah, the market is pretty bad for buying a truck and for fuel and for moving freight. So yeah, it's pretty bad for all three. Yeah, the market's bad right now, but it could get worse. So I always tell people the freight market is just like the stock market; it's going to go up and down. And if you wait until the market's perfect to jump in, you're going to be waiting forever because no one can predict the future. So like if you, if, if you look at it today and say, oh, it was pretty bad today, I'm going to wait six months. It might actually be worse in six months than it was today. So there's no point in waiting as long as you've got a, a good work ethic and as long as you're smart and look at the numbers and as long as you got a good business, you, you'll be fine. I wouldn't wait six months until the market gets better because it might actually get worse. You also need a DOT medical card. Yeah, that's it. It's really, really simple. Just wait to get the DAT load board until you actually have your truck. Yep, yeah, your cost per mile is huge. That's the most important thing that you can plan out before you start driving. You wanna go through that? Yeah, you're not gonna have the exact numbers, but you can at least try to guess and try to plan. I mean, I, I'm looking at my Excel spreadsheet right now. Do you just wanna like go through together, line by line? Okay, so it all depends. The very first thing that you have to look at is how many miles are you gonna drive per week? So whenever I started, I was driving like 2,000 miles per week. But I think you, you know, that's conservative. I think you could be a little bit more aggressive and probably get 2,500 miles per week. But, you know, just ballpark, you know, between 2,000 and 2,500 miles per week. So for the, for the, sake, for the sake of the calculations, I'll do 2,500 miles, which is to, it's totally doable in terms of like DOT hours of service, but it can just be a little bit difficult booking booking loads, booking the right loads for the right distance, going to the right cities. That's where it becomes kind of a puzzle that you have to put together when you dispatch your truck. So getting 2,500 miles is easy. The hard part is getting a good rate per mile. You can, you can drive 2,500 miles per week all day at a dollar a mile, that, that's easy. But it's gonna be difficult to get 2,500 miles at $2 a mile. But that's really gonna make or break your business. Like you don't wanna be taking loads for a dollar a mile, dollar fifty a mile. You wanna to try to stay as close to $2 a mile as possible. But for the sake of the calculations, we will assume just $1.80 a mile. That's what you're gonna get paid, $1.80 a mile. With those two things in mind, we know that we're driving 2,500 miles per week and 2,500 times 1.8, we're making $4,500 revenue per week. So those are the two numbers we need to start 
to calculate our cost per mile. The next thing we need to know is diesel. How much does diesel cost? It was $3.60 when I got started back in 2021. Unfortunately, it's not like that anymore. It fluctuates, as you know, anywhere from like five to six dollars a gallon, depending on the region of the country. Where do you plan on driving the most? Okay, so we'll just assume five dollars a gallon for diesel. That's that's about what it is right now in the Midwest. Down south, it's even cheaper. Like Texas, it's even cheaper. But we'll just assume five dollars a gallon for diesel, and that's going to fluctuate. Like this cost per mile is not one and done. You should be constantly looking at your cost per mile, changing it on a weekly basis, depending on the price of gas and how much you're spending on maintenance. But we'll just assume $5 a gallon for diesel. And then the other calcul the other number you need to know is your miles per gallon. And my box truck got 7.6 miles per gallon. Your truck will probably be somewhere between seven and eight miles per gallon. So for the sake of this calculation, we'll just assume 7.6 miles per gallon. So if we know how many miles you're driving, if we know how many miles per gallon you get, and if we know how much you're paying per gallon, we can calculate roughly how much you're gonna spend on fuel that week. So based on the miles and the cost per gallon and the miles per gallon, you're looking at about $1,600 in diesel. Yep. Per week, and and the way and the way you calculate that is you take miles divided by miles per gallon, and that gets you the number of gallons. So two thousand five hundred divided by seven point six gets you the number of gallons you're going to buy, and then you multiply that by how much it costs per gallon. So miles divided by miles per gallon gets you gallons, and then gallons times cost per gallon gets you total cost. Okay, now the next thing is your truck cost. How much is your truck gonna cost? Have you have you even started looking at trucks? Because I know you, you can find one for maybe 40,000, but you can also find one for 80,000. All depends on where you're looking and what kind of truck you're looking at getting. 80,000, okay, so we'll just assume, for the sake of the conversation, we'll just assume your truck costs $80,000. And so we're gonna take that 80,000 and divide it by 60. And the reason I chose 60 is because we're gonna assume you're gonna use this truck for five years. So we're gonna we're gonna figure out how much your truck costs per month. So five years times 12 months is 60 months. So we'll take $80,000 divided by 60 months. So about on average, $1,333 per month your truck's gonna cost. And that's not actual cash flow. So you know you might you might pay for your truck with, with cash all up front, or you might get a loan for your truck. But just to keep it simple, we're not actually spending $1,333, but for the sake of the calculation, we're just assuming total total cost of the truck divided by total months you're gonna be using the truck, $1,300 per month for the truck. Now insurance, like I said in the beginning, it's gonna, insurance is gonna fluctuate wildly depending on your credit score, depending on your driver history, and depending on the value of your truck. My insurance was like $1,100. I've seen guys go as high as $2,200, $2,500 per month for insurance. We'll just assume you're right in the middle, $1,500 per month for insurance. Like I said, these are just rough calculations. Just a good place to start for planning purposes. $1,500 per month for insurance. Now, do you plan on hiring a dispatcher or are you gonna dispatch your truck yourself? I seriously recommend you do it yourself. There's there's a lot of value in dispatching your own truck. You're gonna make more money and you're gonna learn a lot. You don't wanna depend on somebody else. Dispatching your truck, incredibly important. It's like it's like the whole sales department of your business. It's very important. It's the face of your business. You know, the dispatcher is gonna be talking and communicating with brokers. You wanna be that guy who's the face of your business. You wanna be professional and courteous and on time and good communication, like you want that responsibility. You don't wanna have somebody else be responsible for that. The only thing to keep in mind, and I tell everybody this, it's gonna take you two to four hours every day to dispatch, to dispatch your truck. So just, ha just have that mindset going in that you're gonna, you're, you're gonna wake up at 5.30 in the morning, dispatch your truck for an hour. When you get to the shipper, you're gonna pull out your computer and you're gonna be making phone calls and sending emails for 30 minutes while you're waiting to get loaded. In the evening from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., after you're done driving, you're gonna be sending more emails, making more phone calls, just get in the mindset, at least in the beginning, that you're gonna be spending two to four hours every day dispatching your box truck. Okay, so the last two things we need to look at is your factoring fee, which I assume you're gonna get a factoring company, and they typically charge 3%. So we're just gonna take your total revenue, $4,500, multiply that by 3%. And then finally, I always include just $100 of overhead, just miscellaneous expenses, like your QuickBooks subscription, your DAT load board subscription, just miscellaneous things. So now, with those numbers in mind, we can, we can look at our total cost. So we have the total cost of diesel, 
and then for your monthly expenses, your, your truck cost and your insurance cost, I divide it by 4.3. I don't divide it by four. So typically people think just take the monthly cost and divide it by four and you get the weekly cost, but there are more than 48 weeks in a year. So you have to divide it by 4.3. So we get your weekly vehicle cost, 300 bucks a week, your weekly insurance cost, 350 bucks a week. And I've got all this on a spreadsheet. Like I can send you this spreadsheet after we're done with this phone call. And then maintenance. Maintenance fluctuates. It all depends on the year of your truck and how much you're driving. So I typically guess or budget between 10 cents and 20 cents per mile. Because obviously the more miles you drive, you know, the more wear and tear on your truck, the more you're gonna pay for maintenance. So if you buy a brand new truck, you're probably looking at 10 cents a mile. If you buy a really old truck, probably closer to 20 cents a mile. So for the sake of the budget, for the sake of the conversation, we'll just assume you're gonna spend 15 cents per mile on maintenance, that's right in the middle. So based on 2,500 miles, every single week, you're gonna be spending $375 on maintenance. And when I say spending $375, I don't literally mean like paying your mechanic, you're just gonna be, be budgeting and saving 375. Sometimes you might spend a thousand, sometimes you might spend zero. Save and budget $375 every week on maintenance. Now the last thing is tolls. I plan five cents per mile on tolls. Obviously if you're driving in New York or New Jersey, you're gonna spend more. If you're driving in, I don't know, Texas or South Dakota, you're gonna be spending less. But, but it's not that big of a deal, just five cents per mile on tolls. Okay, so in conclusion, we have Diesel, weekly vehicle cost, weekly maintenance, insurance, just general overhead, $100 a week, tolls, factoring company, for a total weekly cost of three thousand dollars for hotels, five hundred a week. Yeah, I mean, you can get a you can get a cheap hotel for sixty bucks a night. Do you want to stay in a hotel every single night? Five night five nights a week or seven nights a week? Yeah, so we'll just do sixty times five, three hundred bucks a week for hotels. So now that brings your cost up to three thousand three hundred dollars. You're going to be spending three thousand three hundred dollars. Yeah, so to calculate your cost per mile. All you do is you take your total cost, divide that by your total miles. So 3,300 divided by 2,500, your cost per mile is $1.34. Yep, anything over $1.34 is profit. So if you're making $1.80 per mile, you're gonna profit $1,100 per week, which is pretty good, like $55,000 a year net income. That's a pretty good job. So it's really simple. Um, when deciding to get another truck, so. The, 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 your entire business is going to change. Whenever you go from being a driver, managing another driver and getting a second truck, it's a totally different mindset, totally different business. But it's really simple. All you have to do is just wait until you get enough, until you save up enough money for a down payment for a second truck. So if you're looking at buying a truck for $80,000, you're probably going to have to put 20% down. So you just got to save $16,000. So continue driving your truck for as long as it takes for you to save $16,000. It's probably gonna take you six months to save up $16,000. It all depends on your, your family situation and, and how many expenses you have, but you know, three to six months, maybe six to 12 months, hopefully in the first year you're able to save up $16,000. QuickBooks has multiple different versions that they offer. First, they offer a desktop version, which I don't recommend anybody use. Don't get the desktop version, get QuickBooks online and get the cheapest version, it's called Simple Start. QuickBooks Simple Start, it's like, 25 bucks a month and you'll be able to do everything you need to do. Yep, yeah, I've got a course, QuickBooks, I teach you how to do everything you need to do, cat like categorizing your transactions, setting up your truck, setting up your liabilities, reconciling your accounts, generating your profit and loss. I show you how to do all that in my QuickBooks course. It's like 60 bucks. Yeah, I also do like full service bookkeeping. So for $200 a month, I'll do all of your bookkeeping for you. I'll categorize all your transactions, reconcile your accounts, make sure everything is 100% accurate and then I'll send you your profit and loss statement on a monthly basis. Yeah, so hours of service is kind of confusing and it actually took me a long time to really figure it out. I thought in the very beginning that I could, as long as I didn't drive for more than 11 hours per day, I'd be fine. So foolishly, I thought like, oh, I'll drive for five hours and then, you know, take a break for five hours and then drive for five more hours and then just kind of like keep on doing that, just kind of keep on resting and driving, but you can't do that. So first of all, you have to take a 10 hour break every single day. So what that means is like you can only work for 14 consecutive hours. So if you, if you start working at 8 a.m., like no matter what, you have to stop at 10 p.m. So it's kind of it's kind of difficult because like you could you could potentially start working at 8 a.m. and then like not really work like at all 
and then like start working again at 9 p.m. But like you'd still have to take a break at 10 p.m. If that if that makes sense. So, like so, just to keep it simple, like for every 24 hours you have to stop for you have to rest for 10 consecutive hours. So uh, essentially, like a typical day, right? Like you start driving and you can drive for 11 hours per day. So that that basically leaves three hours outside of your drive time for like other things, like doing your pre-trip and post-trip inspection, getting loaded at the shipper, getting unloaded at the receiver, or just like other miscellaneous things throughout the day. So you have 11 hours every day to drive, and then you have 14 total hours on top of that to work. And those 14 hours that you're working include those 11 hours that you're driving. So that's like a daily requirement. And technically, you have to, you, you can't sleep in your truck unless you have a DOT approved sleeper cab. So in order to take your 10 hour break, you have to be like either out of your truck or in a DOT approved sleeper cab. But a lot of guys sleep in the truck anyway, but it's, just, it's against the rule. And then the second thing that you have to keep in mind, there's a 60 hour work week. So you can't work more than 60 hours in a seven day period. So typically what a lot of guys do is, you know, they'll work basically Monday through Friday. Maybe they'll have a few hours left over on Saturday morning, and then they'll take their 34 hour reset Saturday and Sunday. And all of that is gonna be tracked directly through your electronic logging device. And it, it, it automatically tracks it. So as soon as you turn your truck on, as soon as you start driving, your ELD starts tracking your time automatically. The best thing you can do is just learn how to negotiate with brokers. Cause, it, cause it, it's like I said, it's really easy to find loads paying a dollar a mile, dollar fifty a mile, but you're, you're gonna work yourself tired. You're gonna, you're gonna work 11 hours a day and you're not gonna make any money doing it if you're taking loads for a dollar a mile. So just like take the extra hour every day to make an extra 30 phone calls to brokers and send an extra 30 emails to get that $2 a mile. That way you're not wasting your time. I'm sure it's going to be frustrating the first 30 days. And you know, if you've ever had a sales job before, like you're going to get rejected a lot. A lot of people are going to call you crazy, but then you're going to spend three hours trying to dispatch your truck. And then that last phone call you make, someone's going to be desperate and they're going to pay you $2 a mile or $3 a mile and you're gonna hit the jackpot and it's gonna all be worth it. So just don't give up early, don't take that cheap load, just put in the extra effort, put in the extra time and just make those phone calls. And then secondly, build really good relationships with your broker because in the beginning, you're gonna be on the DAT load board, but the whole goal is to get off the DAT load board because brokers go directly to carriers with the best loads and then the loads that you're seeing on the DAT load board are all the leftover scraps that nobody else wanted. So every time you work with a broker, be very professional, have great communication, just have a really good relationship with that broker, get his phone number, get his email address, add it to a list. And then the next time you're in Atlanta or the next time you're in Phoenix, Arizona, and, and you know that brokers work in that lane, reach out to that broker directly. You know, say, you know, Call him up, send him an email, say, hey, you know, I worked with you last month. I ran this load for you. I'm back in, in Arizona. What do you, do you have anything available? That's where you're going to find your best loads, reaching out to brokers directly. And then you're going to work with a new broker every single day. So as you work with new brokers, build basically your book of business. By, by book of business, I mean like a list of names of other brokers. And so eventually you get to a point where you're going to have a list of 30, 40, 50, 60 brokers. And then you can just call them all, email them all and say, hey, you know, I'm in Phoenix, I'm in Atlanta, I'm in Chicago, you guys have any loads leaving tomorrow? And chances are those brokers will start reaching out to you if you build that good relationship. And then you won't even need the DAT load board anymore, you'll be getting the best loads, brokers will just be calling you directly. Nope, I don't have my CDL and I don't get drug tested. Yeah, yeah, you can own semi trucks, you can be running a, a semi truck business and not have to have your CDL or not get drug tested, not do, not do any of the requirements that a CDL driver has to go through. As long as you're not operating the equipment, you don't need the requirements. Getting your CDL isn't gonna help if you're running a non-CDL box truck, but you will be able to make a lot more money if you get your CDL and start running either a CDL box truck or even better, get your class A and run a tractor trailer. You'll be able to make a lot more money. It'll actually be easier to run a tractor trailer business because it's easier to find loads for a tractor trailer than it is for a box truck. But it's obviously a lot more difficult and a lot more dangerous to drive a semi truck. The other thing I would say is don't go cheap on maintenance. So before you get your truck, find a trusted diesel mechanic and have him inspect your truck. I'd rather spend $300 today to have a mechanic look over a truck. I know $300 might sound like a lot of money to you right now, but believe me, like in the long run, it's so worth it because I got a truck in February 
and I had to spend five thousand dollars to get the clutch replaced, like a month after I got the truck. So spending five, spending three hundred dollars to have a diesel mechanic thoroughly inspect your truck before you buy it is well worth the money. And then once you buy your truck, don't go cheap on maintenance. You're gonna need to get an oil change like every six to eight thousand miles and do that like don't skip oil changes and if the mechanic recommends that you get something fixed i would listen to the mechanic like all just take care of your truck that way because the last thing you want is your truck to break down while you're over the road if you're running local stuff it's not as important but if you're a thousand miles away from home and your truck breaks down and you're loaded and you got to be somewhere in an hour like you're screwed so just do a really good job with taking care of your truck with the mechanic and then also like learn how to do a pre-trip and a post-trip inspection and like seriously look over your truck before you start driving. I know a lot of guys probably just pencil whip the pre-trip inspection and don't check things, but like this truck is yours, like you paid for it, like it's literally your business. Just take care of it and like really inspect it and make sure everything is right and like kind of learn how to do little things, like learn how to change the oil, learn how to, you know, check for leaks and, and just I'm, I don't really know a whole lot about trucks, but like just learn how to do little things like that. That way you can check it on the road. Yeah, so you're gonna spend 20% 20, 20 down on the truck. So if you're looking at getting a truck for $80,000, you're gonna have to spend $16,000 as a down payment right off the bat. And then your insurance, you're gonna have to pay two months of insurance immediately. So plan on spending $3,000 in the first month on insurance. And then on top of that, I would save seriously like two to $5,000 for maintenance right away. Like as soon as you get your truck, just assume it's gonna break down the first day you start driving it and assume you're gonna to have to spend $5,000 to fix it. Hopefully you don't, but if you have that $5,000, you'll be in such a better place than if you don't have that $5,000. So seriously, just plan on spending $5,000 right off the bat. Hope that you don't, but if you do, at least you have it. And then make sure you're paying your taxes. So you still, just because you're a business owner and it's your first year in business, you, you still wanna pay quarterly taxes. So, fi so figure out, you know, if you had a job last year, figure out how much money you paid in taxes last year. And a good rule of thumb is just to pay that every quarter. So if you paid $20,000 in taxes last year, then just pay $5,000 four times every quarter this year for your quarterly taxes. That way, if you don't pay any taxes this year, you might get hit with a massive tax bill next year. And you know, not everyone has $20,000 saved up. And you can actually pay your quarterly taxes directly on your, on the IRS website. And if you need more help with that, you know, reach out to like, your local CPA or your accountant or whoever you have filing your taxes for you, he or she should be able to help you out filing your quarterly taxes. GPS, GPS is super important. And for my guys, I have an iPad for the GPS, but you can also get a Garmin. They're like 300 bucks. I'm running the iPad because it's just easier for them. They can log into their, the ELD and they can take pictures of the, of the paperwork and they can have you know a nice big screen on the iPad and you can download an app called Trucker Path. It's 12 puck. $12 a month and it's like trucker special GPS that'll help you avoid bridges and just roads that you can't go on. But for the GPS, I also recommend use your phone as a backup. So like the trucker path the GPS and the truck GPS will be great for keeping you safe, but it's not always the best for route optimization because, you know, as you know, like Apple Maps and Google Maps, like they're really high tech nowadays. Like they'll even tell you if there's an accident or an obstacle up ahead and they'll reroute you. So what you can do is run two GPS at the same time. Use the trucker GPS when you leave the highway to keep you safe, but use your phone and Google Maps or Apple Maps when you're on the highway for route optimization. And then just like for tools and supplies, like it's always nice to have a pair of gloves. You wanna have a like a reflective safety vest because some shippers and receivers don't let you on you know their property without a vest. It's nice to have gloves. It's good to have a flashlight. Um, you, you know, just like a general mechanics tool set, you can go on Amazon or go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get one for like a hundred bucks. Nothing crazy, just wrenches, screwdrivers, just like really basic stuff. Probably good to have a hammer, probably good to have basic wire cutters just in case you can't break the seal on the back of the truck. It's good to have wire cutters. I've heard guys can kind of test your tire pressure with a rubber mallet. I've never done it. You can also get just like a tire pressure gauge, but like a lot of my CDL drivers, they say they just need a rubber mallet and they can test the, pre the tire pressure. I don't know anything about that, but apparently it works. And then it's also nice to have just like some general supplies. So I ran into some issues trying to get my oil changed over the road. They didn't have the proper fuel filter or the oil filter. So you can just go to your local truck stop or local truck store and stock up on fuel filters and oil filters. And then you can also get other supplies, like you can get like the belt, 
you can get some antifreeze. You can, you know, it never hurts to have a couple quarts of oil just in case you need to fill up. And then get a broom for cleaning out your box because the, the back of your box is gonna get really dirty. So it's nice to have a broom just to sweep that out. Make sure you get ratchet straps. Make sure you get ratchet straps. Don't get cheap ratchet straps. You need the ones that have like a 10,000 pound limit. I got six of them and that seemed to work pretty well. You're obviously gonna need a pallet jack. I didn't really ever need a moving dolly, but you definitely need a pallet jack. Don't ever let a forklift go into your box truck. No, forklifts are way too heavy to go into your box truck. And then whenever you're trying to buy a box truck, try to get one, the dimensions of the box are really important. Obviously you want one that's 26 foot long. They're all pretty much eight foot wide but you wanna get one as tall as possible. Uh, they, they vary wildly from like 90 inches tall to 103 inches tall. Try to get one as tall as possible. Like if it's only 90 inches tall, you're gonna be pretty limited. But if it's like 98 inches tall, 100 inches tall, that's gonna be good. And then you wanna get a lift gate. Obviously you need a lift gate. Yeah, so after this call, I'll send you the, the cost per mile spreadsheet. And then if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. Yep, good luck with everything.